A very warm welcome to our carol service. We're delighted that you can join with us. We hope you're in good heart and good voice. We're going to sing some much-loved carols and hear traditional readings. And there'll be something a little different in the middle of the service. Uh, we're very grateful to Grace Church Guildford for their help with the carols. And the words of the carols will be on the screen. We begin, as we always begin, our carol services uh, by asking God for his help. So let's pray. Our gracious and almighty God, we thank you for the sending of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into this world. We pray that you would bless our time together. And as we hear the readings and as we sing these carols, we pray, our God, that you might meet with each one of us, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first carol is O Little Town of Bethlehem, and the words of the first verse read, How still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight.
our first reading this evening is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Our second carol is Silent Night.
Our next reading can be found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, and I'll be reading verses 1 to 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophets. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The next hymn we'll be looking at is Joy to the World.
Lord, I know that every step you lead is pulling me deeper, deeper in the light. Christmas is good news for me because that baby born into a stable in Bethlehem is the Lord Jesus Christ. He came that we might be able to enjoy peace with God. And this news has completely transformed my life. The news of Christmas brings me comfort, fills me with so much joy and really is the best news. Christmas is good news to me because it helps me to focus again and remember the fact that Jesus Christ became a human being and entered this world uh, to die on the cross for our sins. And at Christmas, I remember that and rejoice that I've got peace because of what he has done on the cross. And it's a wonderful time to celebrate that truth. Christmas is the best news for me because it gives me a worldview that deals with death. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring us to God. Christmas is good news to me because it shows God's faithfulness, how he promised to send somebody to deliver us, and that's exactly what he did when he sent his son 2,000 years ago, that Jesus came just as a baby and would eventually grow up and go to a cross to die for us. That's why Christmas is good news for me. Christmas is good news for me because it is a celebration that God himself became a man called Jesus. He came into this world that he made to bring me out of darkness into light, from a place of hopelessness to an eternal hope in him. And even though I had rejected him for so long, he did not reject me. He saves from every tribe, nation, and tongue. No one is outside of his wonderful love. About the love that's been
This reading is taken from John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And our next carol is, O come all ye faithful.
Well, this year Christmas has come particularly early. Uh, walking down Amy and Park Road at night in early December, Christmas lights everywhere and some people have gone big. Lights shining in the darkness. Lights to bring us some Christmas cheer. And after the year that we've had, who's to say we don't need it? Lights shining in the darkness. What did the shepherds see? And in that same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. A light shining in the darkness. What did the wise men follow? And behold, the star went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. A light shining in the darkness. And what did John say? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A light shining in the darkness. The birth of Jesus is the coming of the light into our cold, dark world. And who's to say we don't need it? Three short and very simple things. Number one, the true light. John calls Jesus the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Now, Jules Verne wrote a story called The Lighthouse at the End of the World. At the tip of South America, a lighthouse to warn ships of the treacherous rocks. But a shipload of cutthroat pirates turn up. They extinguish the light so that unsuspecting ships flounder on the rocks. And of course then the pirates plunder the cargo. So what's the lesson? Well, darkness is treacherous. If light saves, the darkness destroys. And says John, this world is a dark place. But Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness so that we don't make shipwreck of our souls. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Number two, the, the welcoming light. Now, some years ago in December, uh, I was walking in the Welsh mountains and I got lost and the weather turned nasty and the darkness fell and I was horribly lost. So what did I look for in the valley below? A light shining in the darkness, a light to guide me to safety. And at last I saw a light, it was a farmhouse and all oh, the relief, the joy, because the sight was so welcome. A light, it was a welcoming light to lead me safely home. Isn't that John's picture? God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. But having walked out on the God who is light, says the Bible, we are lost in the darkness. But Jesus is the true light, the welcoming light, to lead us safely home. And to everyone who comes to that light, God makes a promise. We had it in our reading. But to all who did receive him, that's Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. It's as though God opens a door and stands on the doorstep. And as the light shines in the darkness, he says to everyone lost in the darkness, this way, come to my son, trust in him, and you'll be safe and loved and home. Everyone is welcome. Jesus is the light to welcome us back to God, to welcome lost children home. And number three, Jesus is the saving light. 
So here's a party of cavers and they're trapped underground and it's dark and it's cold and the water's rising. In a few hours they'll be dead. But from the outside, from above, a rescuer comes. He comes from the light. He goes down into the darkness to where the trapped cavers are to lead them to safety. And by the actions of the one, the many are saved. Now that's the, that in essence is the Christmas story. That's the good news that the angel announced. The angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, a rescuer, who is Christ the Lord. From above, from the world of light, God stepped down into our world of darkness and death. It was a rescue mission. That's why God became what he had not been, human, without ceasing to be what he was, God. A human being, to reach human beings, trapped in the darkness, and to lead them to safety, to life, to his world of light. Jesus, the saving light. Says the Bible, I need to be rescued. We've treated God in ways that would break any relationship. We've frozen him out. And cut, having cut ourselves off from God, we find ourselves in the dark and facing death, and what lies beyond. But God, for love's sake, refused to walk on by. He came to our rescue in Jesus Christ. Now, after the year we've had, as we've said, uh, many have gone big. So Christmas trees in November, uh, the local butcher's order book for turkeys uh, was full by early December. And Christmas lights, 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 lights shining in the darkness. We've gone big, well, because we feel we need it. God's gone big because we do need it. He gave his son. What more could he give? And he gave him not just on that Bethlehem night. This child who was born to save was therefore destined to die. God gave his son to the death of the cross. On that cross, the wrongs which have cut me off from God, they were hung around Jesus' neck and he was plunged into the hell that I deserve. He was cut off. He took the blame. That all who trust in Jesus, all who bow the knee, can enjoy peace with God, a healing forgiveness, and life that's so real, so satisfying, so alive, the Bible calls it eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life life. God has gone big. God has pulled out the stops for us. He gave his son to the death of the cross to rescue those lost in the darkness and all at cost to himself. Not because we deserve it, but because love sees and love intervenes and love runs to our rescue. Love comes into the darkness to save. Jesus, the true light, the welcoming light, the saving light. Christmas is a time for old films, and one classic from 1946, Great Expectations with John Mills. But it's that final scene uh, we don't have time for the full story, but that final scene, uh, John Mills, he's Pip, and he finds Estella, a young woman, 
And she's alone in Miss Havisham's house, sitting in the darkness. And it's a house of death, decay, dust. It's a future without hope. So what does Pip do to break the spell? He lets in the sunlight. So he tears down these great curtains from the windows and he throws open the shutters. And he says, look, Estella, look, nothing but dust and decay. I've never ceased to love you. Come with me out into the sunlight. We're like those who sit in a darkened room, in a house of death, a future without hope. And suddenly the door bursts open and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he tears down the curtains and he throws open the shutters. And he says, no more sitting in the darkness. Turn to the light. There's a new way to live, a new life with me. I've never ceased to love you. And as the light of his love streams in, he says, come with me. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let's sing our final carol. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king.
Well, thank you for joining with us this evening. Let's close with these words. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, to the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>